Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. This week's Supreme Court pronouncement on the last presidential election, which affirmed the victory of President Muhammad Buhari, marked the end of one political cycle and effectively the beginning of another one that will culminate in 2023, when Nigeria will have its next general elections. For a chat on this and a whole range of other political issues, we are now being joined from Arise Abuja studio by Chief Judge Mohalu, National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress and Chairman of the Ni Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority. Welcome to the program, Chief Mohalu. Good morning. Yeah, Chief, there was a mix up there. You are not National Chairman of the APC. You are still the National Auditor, right? Just to correct that. Uh, no, let me make a correction here. Yes. Um, I am I not more the wrong. national auditor. Okay, what are you following, now? Yes, following my, appointment as, following my appointment as the managing director CEO of the National Inland Waterways Authority, NIWA. Right. So I had to, because that, that's a full-time job, so I had to leave office as national auditor. Okay, so I mean, okay, having said the uh, record straight, let's go straight to business. What's your reaction to the Supreme Court ruling right. on uh, the... Um, case between the PDP and uh, the APC over the presidential election and between Alaji Atiku Abubakar and uh, President Muhammad Buhari. The Supreme Court was quite brisk, very brief, very quick in saying that the PDP, uh, the PDP uh, case lacks merit. What do you think? Oh, well, as expected, first of all, I am happy. Uh, I, but at the same time also, I must congratulate the, the PDP for exercising their right, for exploring the opportunity that is available to them uh, to go, for going to the point they've gone to. But the point here now is that now we are true with the legal challenges and the legal implication that um, government will go straight to business. We all have to show a little more patriotism by the opposition, if there are points or issues they hold very dearly with regards to good governance, I don't see why they can't make that available to the, to the government, uh, the party in government. The truth about all this is that the issue here is the Nigerian people. If we are all sincere about our determination to better the lot of our people, we must see, for me, see these legal challenges as part of the democratic process, improving on our jurisprudence. But the moment we are through with it, we should now head straight to governance and deliver the dividends of democracy as we all promised. Indeed. Well, congratulations, sir, on your appointment as um, the new MDN CEO. But, you know, how, do, how does one put this delicately? There's been a lot of instability in that particular maritime agency. So many MDs in the past seven years. The average length is like a year or a year and a half, 18 months. That's the average tenure at NIWA. I mean, how was your appointment received, firstly? Secondly, are you one of those that it's perceived of that was sent to NIWA as a sort of stopgap? Then you'll be moved somewhere else in a year to 18 months, leaving them looking for another MD. Were you made to sign some kind of oath of commitment by the staff of NIWA when you joined them? Because they must just be so tired of all the, all the upheavals. Um, the, the truth about it is that this question should have rightly gone to those who appointed me or even directly to the staff to be able to assess their reaction. Uh, but I know that um, I was well received uh, when I got to Niwa and uh, we set out to work. Um, I don't think there's any form of instability. Once you have a structure, once you have a system that is put in place rightly to work and deliver, uh, whoever is going to drive it is... Um, is not the issue, but the process. Once the process is there, I think we don't have really, we really have a problem. Okay, Chief, that's fair enough. And of course, you will have your own personal goals and targets that you would like to achieve in this position. We know that we have a lot of issues with our waterways, but respectively, what are your particular goals and targets as chairman of NIWA? Right. Uh, the truth about it is that I met a system, and um, what I want to do at the end of the day is to improve on what I met on the ground. I am conscious of the fact that we need to widen the sphere. We need to open up our waterways because it has a lot of advantage. 
it has a lot to add to our both the GDP to our, our, the issue of our transportation as a country. Uh, one is uh, water transportation is cheaper, or it gives us opportunity to move quite a lot of cargo, and then it will reduce the pressure we have on our roads and our inland roads. So. For me, I, I am desirous of improving on the lot of the system, not only the agency in particular, but being part of a system that will grow the waterway uh, industries to the extent that it can help ease our transportation system. It can help reduce the pressure we have on our roads, principally. Because if you look at our roads today, uh, a majority of them may not have been designed ab initio for the kind of load they receive. So we can help our system, we can help our transportation network by improving on the waterway. So it is part of my challenge, uh, 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 both transport of uh, cargo and human beings. So for me, opening up our waterway, making it viable, bringing in the private sector, encouraging equal participation will help us all. So for me, I think I want to pursue that direction to see that at the end of the day, the waterways are all year round navigable so that we can, party, uh, we can play a role in improving our transport sector. Well, Chimo Alu, I'm sure you are aware by the protests by the Niger Delta Energy Development uh, Security Strategy Group uh, on this. The Secretary General, Tony Uranta, uh, issued a statement, uh, was it yesterday, saying that, look, the proposed amendment to the Nigerian Inland Waterways uh, Act is a violation of the uh, Land Use Act. It's a breach of the uh, uh, Niger Delta Development Commission Act. And that what uh, the uh, you know, federal government is trying to do is to amend the act to turn uh, Niwa you know, into uh, Ruga by other means. Now, what is the problem with this amendment? What is the nature of the amendment? And uh, do you agree, if you are aware, you know, of the protest by uh, certain groups protesting what the federal government is trying to do uh, with the Inland uh, Waterways Authority. And, you know, what exactly is your mandate? You know, I've even asked to see, uh, you know, these reforms uh, through. Uh, first of all, uh, in as much as I haven't seen their protests, to be honest with you, um, I don't think that we reach conclusions without giving opportunity for every other person to play a role in terms of discussion, in terms of opening up the negotiation table. So for me, what we need to do, if there are issues raised or concerns by these um, uh, organizations or agencies, what they need to do is to bring their reservations, bring their disagreements, bring their views to the table so we can align it with other views from other people, so that at the end of the day, we come up with a position that is generally acceptable. As we talk today, there's an act governing the National Inland Waterways Authority. There are responsibilities clearly spelled out in the existing act. But we think that there is need for the amendment. There is need for improvement. If you look at the act, look at the assignment, the responsibilities, look at also the challenges Look at also other issues that, are, that are relate with uh, inland waterways. You find that some of them are not in tandem, excuse me, in tandem with modern realities. So this is an opportunity for us to look at it. Don't forget also that in the National Assembly, there are committees that, uh, that have oversight responsibility over these agencies. So for me, it, it's an opportunity for everybody to look at what is available, look at how we can improve it. So that at the end of the day, it is about improving the national waterways to the benefit of everybody. So it's not about coming, making assumptions, preempting government. Why would you, how do you relate to Ruga, to national inland waterways? For me, it doesn't make any sense. Let us discuss it. If we have reservations, if we have views, the National Assembly certainly is going to throw the discussion open. You send your views there if you can bring it directly to us for us to discuss. If you don't want us to, us to sit down before going there, then you can go straight there and put your views on the table and give them information they can work with. At the end of the day, the important thing here is that the waterways must be made all year round navigable for our own overall benefit. Absolutely, sir. Speaking of National Assembly, what are your thoughts on the proposed investigation that is meant to commence following the joint session between the Senate 
um, Committee on Marine Transport and their House of Reps counterparts, wherein it was alleged that their four billion naira appropriation for non-existence, in quotes, projects by NIWA, that monies have been appropriated for certain projects in 2017, 2018, 2019, and now 2020 for the same projects, and that, that, that there will be an investigation. Now, my question for you, that money was appropriated, we all know, does not mean that money was released. Do you have details on this topic? Uh, first of all, I think this uh, issue has been overtaken by events, in the sense that the person who was credited to have made this allegation, the deputy chairman of the House Committee on Waterways, have come out to say it is not true that he never made such a statement because the total, <clears throat> in totality, the story is absolutely false and non-existent. Because if you read the stories as they presented a fraud in Niwa, four billion naira. If you read the content of the of the the, the uh, uh, news item, you find that at the, uh, uh, as you go down, that they were talking about a building, a freight forwarding house. I don't know how they related freight forwarding to Niwa. So at the end of the day, you find out that they were saying something that is non-existent. Niwa has come out to issue a rejoinder and explained what happened, because I was there at the hearing. The Honorable Minister was there. The PAMSEC, everybody, heads of other agencies under the Ministry of Transportation, were all there. So a few days ago, the, the uh, Deputy Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Waterways came out to refute that statement. So for me, it's a dead issue. There's no point talking about what does not exist. Okay. It was, um, it was quite an issue, actually, when it initially came up. But that's, that's fine, Chief. Now, you mentioned public-private yeah, partnerships. Yeah, it trended. It trended. It trended. Every, every, yeah, it trended. every newspaper oh, yeah, carried it. it. Most newspapers, right? Let me not say every. Chief, Most let me just ask you a question social media, we, uh, oh, you are fraud. Go on fraud a commercial media. break, sir. You mentioned public-private partnerships for the um, water transportation um, issues that we have in Nigeria and how we're trying to get the water transportation system up and running. Aside from water transportation, what else are you seeking public-private partnerships for as the MD of Niwa? I'll leave you to think about that while we go on a quick commercial break. Viewers, stay with us. This is still The Morning Show. We'll be back. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Chief George Mogatlu, the Managing Director of the Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority and the National Auditor of the APC, is still with us on the program. No, no longer National Oh, yes, report. he said. That is very true. My corrections, Chief. The CEO, Nigerian Inland Waterways yes, Authority. that's true. So before we went on a break, Chief, I had um, asked you about what else you'll be seeking out public-private partnerships for other than water transportation as the MD of Niwa. Yes, there's quite a lot we can do with, with the uh, private sector. Uh, you may be aware, um, as we speak, uh, some of our river ports are completed. Uh, some of the jetties are completed. Some are still ongoing. Some of the ports are still ongoing in terms of construction. And um, as we speak, the concession of our nature river port is in progress. Uh, we have the Barrow port that has been completed, but yet to be fully uh, utilized. Okay, so if we, if we, we can, it's, it's an opportunity to get the private sector involved so that um, they can participate for us to grow the industry. Um, we, we are willing to, to enter into partnership. Where we are still talking with some groups that have shown interest one way or the other. So it's not restricted only to, to uh, water transportation, which is also very key. But uh, uh, operating our, our ports, uh, making them functional, the river jetties and what have you. So there's quite a lot we can do with the private sector. The important thing is that we need to get them running. We need to add value to the economy. We need to start repairing the resources government is investing in making our waterways very viable. Well, I'd like to ask you, since your assumption of office as uh, the CEO of the Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority, what are the challenges that you have observed? And beyond that, uh, what are you planning to do about safety and security of our inland uh, waterways, because this is a major challenge. We talk about potholes and accidents on the roads, uh, but it looks like in terms of water transportation, there have been many reports of accidents, if you like potholes, even uh, you know, on our waterways, resulting in uh, avoidable deaths, avoidable accidents. There was even a case of uh, 
you know, uh, newer officials trying to go on a facility tour of jetties. And uh, their boat was, uh, you know, ran into uh, erect, uh, you know, logwood or something, you know, and, uh, you know, they only managed to survive by the grace of God. You know, so what are you doing to ensure safety and security on the waterways, which is a major problem, a problem that has also been acknowledged uh, by the, uh, you know, manager of the uh, river sport and the Onisha port even. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruben. Uh, the truth about it is that we must acknowledge the fact that I'm only 28 days in office. But that is not to say that I've not uh, looked at what the challenges are. We have challenges, no doubt about it, challenge that has to do with, one, the availability of the required funding, which is a general issue now. It's not restricted or limited to, to national inland waterways. I also agree with you that we have security challenges, but where every effort is being made to improve on the security. There's uh, the Nigeria police, the waterway police there. We, we are making effort to ensure we give them all the needed support to make sure that they're up and doing and live up to the responsibilities of their assignment. Yes, you have uh, the issue of wrecks, of floating debris on our waterways. If you look at the advert that I met when I came into office, uh, some of the issues or some of the items you have on the procurement uh, process that is being undertaken now by the authority, you find that clearing of these wrecks is part of it. Uh, a few days ago, the Federal Executive Council approved the procurement of uh, additional boys. Boys is a navigational aid that you have on the waterways that makes, that gives direction or guidance to vessels and barges. So every effort is being made. It's a, it's, it's a known fact that we need to make the waterways safer so that you can, we can encourage general participation. Another area that I want to lay emphasis is also the aspect of uh, citizen uh, education getting people to understand that you just don't go and enter into water. If we are going to do water transportation, the operators of these vessels must ensure that not only are their vessels up to date in terms of uh, uh, mechanical strength, but also that the passengers are well kitted, that they have to be properly prepared to go on water so that we can reduce to the barest minimum, if not wipe it out completely, issues of accidents that involve them. Um, Passengers, but the effort is being made. That fact is acknowledged that we need to clear our waterways. We need to make them navigable all year round. I've repeatedly said this, and one of the ways we have to do this is to ensure that these wrecks and floating debris we have on our waterways are all removed, and the waterways are clearly marked out. We're using navigational aids so that it can become more safe. Absolutely. That, that point about public enlightenment is so important because each time we hear of a boat mishap, which is far too regular for anyone's liking, there's no manifest. You don't even know the names of the people who boarded that boat that day. There's overloading of the boats. There's far too many people there. There's no life jackets. There's so many things that people need to know that they should ask these questions and not get on the boats if it's certain um, newer requirements have not been adhered to. So the people should know that, that they are, and, of, and seaworthiness as well. Some of these boats are completely decrepit. People need to know their rights and insist on their rights. So that, that's a really good point there. I wanted to now um, ask you about your newer ferries that are supposed to also conduct public transportation. And tourism, how is that going? Yes, uh, these are all potentials that we need to explore. Um, like I said earlier, uh, we need to involve the private sector, getting the, the public to participate so that we can improve and develop it. Yes, the issue of uh, ferries, ferrying uh, 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 passengers from one point to the other. A few days back, I think it's about uh, three days ago, I had a meeting with uh, some interested operators who want to get involved with, uh, with us by way of um, providing ferries and participating. So we are negotiating. We want to expand that, that um, scope so that, uh, because we believe that if properly made, that um, it will reduce a lot of pressure on our roads and the passengers will, will find it easier to travel by, by water. And it also has great uh, tourism potentials. I intend, one of the things I intend to do as quickly as possible is to engage critical stakeholders. Uh, very soon a meeting will be called so that I can 
reach out to them, talk with them, share my vision with them, hear them out also, and be able to identify in specific terms the areas of their concern so that we can address them. You see, we, we want to improve on the situation. We want to expand the scope. We want to make uh, waterways the, the transport means of choice, first choice. And that is uh, the target I've set for myself. And uh, so far, so good. I have a good team who share the same sentiment with me. And they're working together, we're going to get our desired destination. I hope so. And what is your exact framework for the new ferries that you plan on putting out on the waters? How many, how many uh, passengers can be carried on one ferry, for example? Because that's another huge issue we have with water transportation across huge cities in Nigeria like Lagos, whereby how many people are we even really carrying across the waters? So what exactly have you put into place as a framework for the Niwa ferries that we're expecting to come onto our waterways soon? You must understand, like, uh, like even vehicles or buses, ferries have their own capacities. There are some that carry 20, there are some that carry 30, there are some that carry 100. It's just like badges. A few days ago, we were discussing the issue. Well, yeah, we are looking at it. It depends on the, the viability of the routes. For example, if, you're, if we are able to open up on Nisha to Lokoja, on Nisha, on, uh, on Nisha to Lagos, Lagos to, to Port Harcourt and areas like that, we now look at the market uh, viability. We look at the interest of those who are par uh, partnering with us so that we can now, we can't just wake up and say, okay, put a ferry that was going to carry 100 persons between this location to their location without doing a critical study, without involving those who are going to operate it so that you know what their intentions are. At the same time, also look at the marketability, the viability of the routes you want to place these ferries. It's not for, for fancy. We're not going to place ferries because we need to have ferries on our waterway. We are going to place ferries to operate on routes we think that are going to be viable and self-sustaining. Well, uh, Chief Maralu, I will um, ask you this question, and then after the question, we'll take a short break. And it is as follows. Now, earlier on, I mentioned the concern of uh, on the deaths uh, and the statement by Tony Uranta. But... There is controversy, there is argument over the control of Nigerian inland waterways between the federal government and the state governments. Now, some state governments, particularly Lagos State, they are asking for a complete repeal of the Nigerian Inland Waterways uh, Act because they say that, look, it's better for the states to control the inland uh, waterways as a way of boosting the uh, strategy of multimodal transportation in Nigeria. And Lagos State, in fact, went ahead to establish its own inland waterways authority to uh, facilitate movement from Ekpe to Ikurudu to other uh, waterways. In the Niger Delta, some of the state governments are also saying they would like to control the creeks. What do you think? You know, not as someone working for federal government, but as a Nigerian uh, who probably, uh, you know, believes also in the idea of federalism. But let's take a short break. When we come back, you can respond to the, uh, to the question. We'll be right back. You're still watching The Morning Show here on Arise News. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News channel. Still with us in our Abuja studio is Chief George Moalu, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority. Now, Chief Moalu, before we went on that commercial break, I asked you a question about the control of the uh, inland waterways in Nigeria and whether indeed we shouldn't just repeal uh, the entire act and hand over the inland waterways uh, to the states. Many of them haven't shown interest that, you know, it would be uh, better for them to be the ones managing the inland waterways. Lagos State is uh, one very strong example. What do you think? Yeah, um, uh, first of all, without um, standing on the risk of being charged for being subjudiced, because I understand from the records that one or two, we still have one or two cases in court that is being looked into by the courts. But let me, let me uh, put uh, uh, th these facts very clear. We have about 10,000 kilometers of waterways in Nigeria, of which about 3,600 hours thereabout is uh, all year navigable. Now, and this 10,000-kilometer uh, waterway crisscrosses 28 states of Nigeria. Ruben, have you tried to imagine a situation where these 28 states have their own laws trying to manage the waterways that crosses their states? 
Have you tried to imagine the chaotic situation we'll find ourselves in? Have you tried to look at the possibility of the problems that will be confronting us? You see, waterways everywhere that I have been to is a responsibility of the federal government. It's a national responsibility. And I don't see what is wrong with the federal government or the federal act, so to speak, navigating and, sorry, controlling this um, particular aspect of our social life. That is not to say that we cannot find a room, a meeting point between the states and the federal government. This requires, like I've always said, discussion. It requires understanding. It requires us appreciating in very clear terms the responsibility of everybody. Nobody wants to uh, overrule or kind of uh, bamboozle any uh, any. Um, level of government. No, no, no. What we are saying is that we need to collaborate. We need to build synergy. The important thing is that these waterways must be made navigable all year round. These waterways, we must take the advantage of what God has given to us so that we can improve on our transportation system. So that we can de-emphasize road transportation to save our road infrastructure. Otherwise, we keep being, for example, look at now, we've been talking of our papa gridlock for years, and it will continue to be so until the waterways are made so navigable to the extent that a good number of these containers that come to Apapa, that end up in the east, end up in the north, some can now be taken by badges and they go straight to Anisha, or they go straight to uh, Lokoja, or they go straight to Baru, and, uh, and get offloaded. So we can reduce that pressure. Imagine if we have a situation where we have 10,000 containers arriving at Apapa Wharf, and, uh, Apapa Wharf for example. And 7,000 or even 6,000 of this comes to the east and 2,000 goes to the north or 3,000, whatever. That goes to say that if we are sending 3,000 containers to the east, 3,000 trailers must come from Lagos to the east. Absolutely. And these 3,000 containers must carry their weight and uh, put it on our roads. So we need to keep engaging them. My predecessor in office from the records available had an engagement with the Lagos state government. Fair enough, we are going to build on it. Other states that are interested in uh, being partners, we want partners to make sure that we succeed. The important thing is that the waterways has to be navigable. The waterways has to play its role that you have, like you have in civilized societies for the betterment of the Nigerian society and its people. So that is the sum total of it all. Indeed. Laswa and Niwa did sign an agreement in July. So I was going to ask you what those clauses are and what's the progress there. And also your point about that vision that you have of using Barro more so that we don't have Barro, Onicha, Lokoja, these river ports, so we don't have this Papa gridlock. It's all very well and good. But I have a question for you. Reports are that Barro port, having the federal government having spent six billion naira building that is inaccessible at this time of year by road because there are gullies everywhere. So what is Niwa planning to do with regards to the, a good road and rail network? Because the aim is intermodal transport. Right. The, the first assignment, the first official visit I made after my appointment is going by water to, to Baru from Lokoja. I did that um, uh, a few days back. I visited Barrow. We have a world-class river port, well-built, well-finished, that is ready to receive cargo with all the modern equipment there. Now, I agree with you, we have road challenges. But as we speak, contract has been awarded for the roads, and they are being addressed. I also know the Niger state government is quite interested in handling the one that they can handle so that to make sure that the Barrow port becomes all year open so that uh, we, can, we can assess it. Um, the important thing here is that everyone, every department, every agency, if you listen to the comment I made after my visit, I said we are going to engage the federal government, we are going to engage the Niger state government, we are even talking with the local government so that everybody can participate. The important thing here is that we want Barrow River Port to be functional as quickly as possible so that the reason for it being established in the first instance will be realized. So we are talking, like you said, there's um, an existing rail line there, a long, long, long time ago, that goes from uh, Barrow to Mina and then up towards Kano. Yes, and I also know from the presentation the minister made while uh, 
uh, defending the budget at the National Assembly. Uh, he made a comment with regards to that, getting it functional so that we can uh, assess the advantage that goes with having rail connecting straight from the port there down to up to Kano. So those, those ones are, are clear and uh, being addressed. And my other question, sir, about Laswa and Niwa, the agreement that was signed in July, has it actually started being implemented? And what were the clauses? What was the agreement that was reached? I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I may not be able to give you the details of the clauses now because I'm still looking at it, looking at the purposes. But like I said earlier, today is my 28th day in office as MD of, um, of NIWA. And if, I, if I, I'm able to know everything within 28 days concerning NIWA, looking at all their records, then I, I may not be human at all. So, but like I said, we, I know, I read it at the time it happened, that there was an engagement between NIWA and the Lagos state government. One, to ensure that all things work well. Because the truth here is that everybody means well. Everybody means well. So if everybody means well, then there are, certainly will not be areas of stiff disagreement. It's a matter of sitting down, it's a matter of discussing, it's a matter of negotiating, putting all views on the table. We are looking at which ones are in the interest of our people, the interest of the nation, we all will build on it. So when I am through with that, I will still have to engage the Lagos team so that I ensure that we have a smooth operation. Whatever is agreed, uh, this government, uh, this administration in Niwa will build on what our predecessors in office did. We look at the papers and then work, we'll build on it. And Chief, how long do you personally think it's going to take before the Barrow Port in itself is actually fully up, running and functional? And I say this because it's all well and good uh, for us to talk about the fact that contracts have been awarded, etc., and efforts are being made, but we're still losing money or we're still going to lose money for every day that it's not functional. So do you have an idea of how long you think this process in itself is going to take? We share the same concerns with you with regards to the fact that uh, uh, as there's delay that we are losing money. Yes, everybody shares that sentiment. And that commitment must have driven the, the, the government to have awarded a contract for the construction of the roads. So I may not be able now because, one, I don't have the statistics with regards to the contract agreement with the content of the road contract to say that it's going to be completed on Monday or Tuesday, I may not be in a position to say that. So if I sit down here now and tell you that the barrel port will be functional by December or by next week, November, then I may be lying to you. But what I know is that there is a commitment, there is a determination to ensure that barrel port gets fully functional as quickly as possible. And we are determined to do that. Well, Chief Mogalu, I mean, you say you've spent uh, 28 days uh, in office as MD and CEO. Um, I'd like to ask you a question about what you have observed with regard to sustainable leadership in uh, NEWA. I mean, since uh, 2013, uh, NEWA has had a total of four managing directors. There was even a time, you know, there was a permanent, uh, almost permanent acting managing director. And you've had quite a high turnover. Um, you've had Mamora, you've had Boss Mustafa, you've had Mrs. Shiroma, you've had now your good self, you are there. What, what is responsible for this high turnover? You know, no managing director gets a chance to really sit down you know, and make uh, changes. I mean, you have plans, you have expressed what your vision is, but what is the guarantee that you even spend up to a year? Mamora was there, maybe his biggest ach achievement was uh, trying to uh, work out a partnership with Lagos State Government, which didn't quite work. You know, it was done on paper, but it didn't work because the Minister of Transportation came in and said the inland waterways uh, belong to the federal government. Any guarantee that you will stay long enough to be able to make a difference? Oh, Ruben, you're trying to make me God. Uh, you can as well ask any guarantee that I, I, I will all be alive by tomorrow. Uh, no, nobody can give that kind of guarantee. The important thing is that all the movements we have said with regards to NIWA goes to show there's something special about NIWA. One, two, that the people who have moved were moved to higher challenges. So the important thing here is that while you are there, now that I found myself there, I'm working as if my, my appointment is for what day. And that is my, what I have in mind. I'm doing my best to ensure that even if it is one day I stay in NIWA, that 
somebody will be able to say that within this one day, this man stayed here, that he impacted on the organization. So with that at the back of my mind, I keep working hard, I keep pursuing my vision, getting my colleagues and those who are working with me to understand my direction and going with it. So that if it pleases God, whatever time God has destined that I'm going to be at Niwa, I'll make the best out of it. So that at the end of the day, the important thing is what contribution have I made with regards to moving Niwa further from the point I met it to a better position. And I'll keep doing that, having that at the back of my mind, God helping me to uh, my, achieve my desired objective. So it's not about um, how long I'm, a guarantee of how long I'm going to stay in Niwa. It's about me working as if tomorrow is my last day in Niwa. <laughs> well, that's why I asked you right at the beginning, if you were asked to sign an oath of commitment by the staff of Niwa to ensure to tie you down there for a while at least. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, nobody asked me to sign, sign any, any oath of uh, commitment that I was going to be in Niwa. You see, why are we worried about this? The truth about it is that if one can sign, sign a commitment that he's going to be in Niwa for 10 years, who, which one did you sign with God that you're going to be alive tomorrow? <laughs> so first of all, you have to sign with God first to confirm that you're going to be alive. Then after that, then you can sign that you're going to walk when you're alive. So for those ones, I don't. Nobody asked me to sign anything, and I didn't sign anything. Okay. Leila, you still have a question for him? Absolutely. Actually, I was going to. Um, I was going to ask you if, as well, you are looking into ways you can collaborate with other government agencies to clean up the waterways over a number of issues. Nigeria has now just been declared as the number one country for open defecation, even though we have efforts by the federal government to try and be open defecation free by 2025. Plastic pollution is also a huge issue. So I wondered how you wanted to take all of this on board. We only have a couple seconds. Well, I think uh, the important thing here, like you said, is that there is a policy already. We have identified this as part of our challenges. We have come to terms with the fact that we have a problem with open defecation. And because of that, government has come out with a policy, even with a timeline, that by so and so date, it should be a thing of the past. So everybody is focused on that and working towards it. Like I said, when we talked about clearing uh, floating debris and what have you, this could be part of it. You never can say. The important thing is that we want to make the waterways as clean as possible. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief George Mahalo. Thank you very much, uh, Chief sure. George Mahalo, and all the best with your new assignment. Absolutely. Absolutely.